Hey, what is up guys, Tava here, and today I'm gonna be showing you how to make the retro Super 8 film look completely in camera super easily with just a few tips and tricks. And I will be showing you some editing software tricks that you can do in post to make it look even better. But this is something you can do in any mirrorless or DSLR camera, as well as a smartphone if you have some apps for it. So this is a super cool effect that's very popular right now, that retro look that a lot of people like. And here is how you can do it the most realistically. The world I used to know, I see it differently. You woke me from a dream, now it's reality. Baby, baby, you are really hurting me. Cause every time you tell me I'm good and bad, I'm doing fine. But nothing ever changes. And now I see, baby, you are hurting me. Stuck in repeat. Stuck so nowadays, most modern cameras shoot at about 24 frames per second, which is usually considered the cinematic standard for frame rates in cameras. But old Super 8 cameras usually shot at 18 frames per second, which is a lot slower frame rate. It makes the camera look more jittery, as well as it just kind of gives it that old retro vibe that a lot of people are going for. So in my modern mirrorless camera that I have right here, I can't actually make that shoot video at less than 24 frames per second. That's the lowest thing to actually go. So what I'm gonna do is basically trick the camera into kind of shooting a lower frame rate. So it's gonna make it look like it has a bit more motion blur, as well as seems like a lower frame rate because the camera shot is a bit more laggier and has a slower frame rate look. So the first thing you're gonna want to do is set your camera's frame rate to 24 frames per second if it can do that because you want to be as close to that low frame rate as you can be without actually getting to it. And then the second thing you're going to do is change your shutter speed. Normally if you're shooting at 24 frames per second you would just double your frame rate so you'd be at about 1 50th of a second for your shutter speed but because we want to have that slow laggy effect basically what we're going to do is bring our shutter speed down to about 1 20th, 1 15th or even 1 10th. And what this is going to do is basically make each frame last longer add more motion blur to it and make it look like your frame rate is actually lower than 24 frames per second. So let's say for example you set your shutter speed to 1 15th of a second. Basically this means that the frame length for that photo is going to be 1 15th of a second. And if you're shooting at 24 frames per second you can't fit 24 frames of 1 15th of a second. It's going to fit 15 in one second. So this means that you're only going to have 15 frames per second despite it being a 24 frames per second timeline. Obviously this sounds super complicated and confusing, I completely understand that, but basically you just need to trust me and understand that it works pretty well. One thing you need to note when you bring your shutter speed down that low is that it's letting more light into the camera because each shutter length is letting more light in. So basically some shots might seem overexposed and how you can fix this is by bringing your aperture up to either 16, 18, or 22, something higher so that it has less light coming in so when the shutter stays open for longer it exposes the shot correctly or you can add an ND filter or a myriad of things. Another thing is that my camera doesn't allow me to shoot autofocus when I'm under 1 30th of a second shutter speed so I have to do manual focus but it helps sell the effect better because Super 8 cameras obviously didn't have autofocus. So once you have your settings set like this, all you have to do is start shooting and you can get some pretty cool shots that look very old fashioned and have that long shutter speed as well as the nice motion blur effects to them. Like I said, you can also do this effect super easily on a smartphone if you have a camera app that allows you to change basically the shutter speed, ISO, things like that. What you can do is use an app like the Moment Pro app and control those things, bring the shutter speed down to 1 15th of a second and you still get that long motion blur jittery kind of shot. So it's super cool, you can do it on your phone as well. So if we jump into an editing software real quick, I'm using Final Cut Pro for this example, but most editing softwares will probably work. You can watch my raw footage back right here that I just shot on the road, and as you can see, it looks pretty good in like a Super 8 camera, but it is missing a bit of the obvious film grain that an old camera would have, as well as some of the colorized degradation look. And so what I'm gonna be doing is using the editing software to kind of tweak these things to make it look more old fashioned and realistic to the Super 8 look. In Final Cut Pro, it's pretty easy because there's a lot of built-in presets already here, but in other editing softwares, I'm sure you can figure it out just with a little bit of creativity and probably able to get a pretty similar looking shot. So let's get started. So one thing to note when I shot this footage is that I used a pretty cheap old fashioned vintage lens so it kind of gave it that vintage unsharp look already but if you're using a sharper more modern lens a good thing to do and I'm going to apply it to this footage anyway is to add some blur to your footage to make it look less sharp because those old Super 8 cameras really weren't the sharpest things in the world so if we go over to blur in our settings here add a Gaussian blur and just put that on top. And I like to set it at maybe six or 7% just to add a little more additional blur to the shot to make it less sharp. Now the next thing we're gonna do is add some grain as well as change the colorization. So to do this in Final Cut Pro, we're gonna go down in the effects to stylize, click on that. 
And what we're gonna do is basically add some film grain. So just put that right on top of your clip. And as you can see, it immediately adds the colorization, which looks pretty good. But what I like to do here is over in the film grain, change the style from iMovie grain to realistic grain, and it gets rid of that colorization bring it down to around 30 or something like that. And as you can see, there's a good amount of grain now, but the colors aren't quite right. So what I'm gonna do in the stylized effects again is go down and find the Super 8 millimeter effect down at the bottom, which is kind of ironic because we're putting it on the Super 8 look, but it does have a pretty good look. So I'm just gonna tweak this a little bit. So over in the Super 8 settings, you have the amount slider, and I like to bring that down to about 25% or something. The hue bias, you can either go to the green side or more to the magenta and blue side. I like to put it a bit on the green side. And then for the grain, I like to bring that back down because again, I added the other grain, which I think looks better. So add a little bit of grain there. And as you can see, it has a pretty nice look. So now you can see if I toggle the effects off and on, you can see how it immediately just adds that nice vintage look to the shot very easily, just in a few clicks. So this is basically all that I did for those example clips. If you wanna add a little bit more of something, you can go into the effects again under stylize and add some aged film look. And the aged film effect basically allows you to adjust some of the colors more, as well as add some scratches, dust, hairs, as well as that jitter that's really common in these cameras. But if you're shooting at that lower shutter speed, you should already have a decent amount of jitter, so I don't really find the need to add this. So. The aged film doesn't do it for me, but the other effects, just a little bit of blur, just some film grain and the Super 8 colorization and film grain looks really good and I think sells the effect perfectly tied with the in-camera settings that you already shot. Anyway, that's it for today. If you like this video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.